this is the uh, last slide where we have stopped our discussions when there is an increase in the number of links means degrees of freedom what is exact procedure being adopted for transformations that has been shown and it can be clearly understood from this then the next point area of discussion is actually how do you represent a point in space as usual say for example if you have a three dimensional space wherein there is a point P, then in vector form axi plus byz plus czk or in other words P is actually being represented with its values a comma b comma c and in matrix form you can see ax by cz it has been and if you consider that in the with a scale factor we will be able to write it as x y z and w, w is actually the scale factor. The connectivity for ax and x and the scale factor can be clearly understood from this. See here, ax is equal to x divided by w. Similarly, by equal to y divided by w. Cz equal to z divided by w. So these are the different ways and means using which you can represent a factor, a point. Let us see with this example, p bar equal to 25i plus 10j plus 20k. How this can be visualized? See. If you try to use those coefficients as such, the weight factor is going to be 1. If you consider the weight factor as 2 or the scale factor as 2, then these values are going to be 25 will become 50, 10 will become 20, 20 will become 40. And the same weight factor can even be taken as 0.5. If you try to take this as 0.5, then you can see 25 will become 12.5, 10 will become 5. 20 will become 10. So the importance of scale factor you will be able to understand clearly with this example. <coughs> then you may have a doubt if w equal to 0 what is going to happen then it is going to represent only the directions which means that ax, by and cz will become infinitive because you can see here x by 0, y by 0, z by 0 that is how the values are becoming infinitive. Then how do you represent how do you represent a frame with respect to a fixed reference frame? So there is a frame and that has to be represented with reference to a fixed reference frame. Say XYZ might be a fixed reference frame. Or okay, AON is one frame, XYZ is actually the other frame. So these two frames are supposed to be represented. How do you represent? See, you can see here for N, O and A. N in x, y and z, o in x, y and z, a in x and y and z. Means with respect to x, y and z, where exactly is n? With respect to x, y, z, where exactly is a and where exactly is o? Directions. So those things are going to be represented because n bar, o bar and a bar are trying to give us an idea on the normal orientation and approach. n, o, a stands that n stands for normal, o stands for orientation, a stands for approach. So two frames are there. Now this is going to give you clearly, see this is your reference frame x, y, z with reference to that earlier frame was there and which was moved by certain units. That moment was actually stated by p and p in the sense px, py, pz. So the vector frame a o n o a frame which was coinciding with the reference frame origin now it was moved by translated by px py pz units okay so that if you try to represent in a matrix form this is what will come earlier we were having only three by three matrix now this translation the change whatever has been brought that has been kept here and this has been showed as one this is actually your scale factor and these the importance of these three things we will understand exactly in, maybe after a few slides and even the importance of all these elements we will see in a short span. So right now you can see earlier there were only nine elements when the frame was coinciding with the reference frame. Now the frame is actually away from the reference frame by P means Px, Py, Pz. Now in place of this particular uh, uh, frame's uh, origin, we are trying to consider an object, 
even that particular object when you want to define with the same similar kind of pattern you will be able to define this is really required now suppose if you try to speak with reference to this particular number of elements there are uh, 4 by 4 how many elements are there 16 elements are there okay so out of this 16 uh, you are, uh, maybe with respect to the object when you try to refer there are 12 pieces of information of which 9 are bothering about the orientation and the remaining 3 are bothering about the position. So what are those 9? So though there are 16 elements, <coughs> they don't want to consider these 4. Then you are left with only 12. Out of them, these are 9 and these 3. And these 3 are trying to talk about the position. These 9 are talking about the orientation. That's what it is. See? 9 elements out of them are responsible for orientation 3 elements are responsible for position but altogether it is better if you can add some constraints and reduce the number of possible constraints rather by applying some constraints if you can reduce the uh, representation number with 6 it would be easy for us so that's what the information which was available in 12 they wanted to reduce it in 6 by adding some constraints. In our add constraints, what is the data, supporting data we have? These two statements are going to deal with that. The three unit vectors n bar, o bar and a bar are mutually perpendicular. That you can understand from your C. n bar, o bar, a bar, they are mutually perpendicular. That's what, that is what is actually the statement one. Each unit vector length must be equal to unity. That is obvious. Now keeping these two conditions intact, see six constraints they were able to write n bar dot o dot o bar equal to 0, n bar dot a bar equal to 0, that is nothing but dot product of n bar and o bar must be 0, similarly it has been attained. Then the first three, these three, if you want, you can represent them with a single cross product, n bar cross o bar equal to a bar. The another thing, Modulus, say magnitude of length of the vector must be 1. That is what we have seen in the second statement. The each unit vector length must be equal to unity. That is what we are able to see. Okay. So that is how we are able to reduce with the support of these six constraints. We were able to reduce the information from 12 to 6. That is how this was helpful. Then why do we recommend to rather why do we prefer to have a homogeneous representation only this is actually though we have not uh, uh, discussed much on this in the earlier um, page this is actually a representation for homogeneous why this representation is important see two points are there which were showed here easy to calculate the inverse of a square matrix so with the experience of matrix this one point then it is also easy to multiply two matrices when their dimensions are same so these two are the major advantages then inherently what are all there the nine elements are dealing with three by three rotational matrix we will see what are all the elements are going to come in place of this they are going to contribute and support for rotation purposes and these three are going to support for translation and this is for scale and these three are for perspective projections. So we are not going to the extent, our discussions are not going to go beyond the scope of us. So that is going to deal, we are limiting ourselves for rotation as well as for translation. Scaling of course you can do, perspective things we are not going to. So you understand the importance of this. Pure translation when you have got, see, this is the given matrix. And that particular matrix you are trying to translate by what units? dx, dy, dz. That you can understand from here. So this is the position of your frame with, respect, with reference to the standard reference frame that has been moved by d units. d units when you are moving means dx, dy, dz. And there is no change in the other elements. That's why unit matrix has been considered out of these nine elements. So which of the distances it need to be translated? those values are going to come here there is no scale changes that's why this has been maintained as one 
and we are not bothering about the perspective that's why they have been represented as zero so now this is the given vector at this position so okay when it is actually at a distance of p from the reference that is what is this then this is your transformation matrix f matrix and t matrix you are going to multiply in order to get the new that's what so when you multiply that this is going to be your result so f new is actually the resultant of that okay so transformation matrix multiplied by given matrix if you do you will give you will get the new position new position in the sense say after it has been moved by d units the new location of o a and n rough frame that is what you will get over here as a result of this multiplication which was labeled here as f new and suppose if you are bothering about the pure rotation alone that also you can understand from here so your reference frame is x y z and your given frame is n o a they are all coinciding and you have got a point p so point p when you consider the data pertaining to that are going to be px py and pz but suppose you have tried to rotate it about x what is going to happen when you have rotated about x the o which was earlier coinciding with o it will move up and the a which was earlier coinciding with a it will move up it is something like you are trying to rotate it about x that's what so what are the rotation that has been experienced for o with respect to o y same angle is going to come at both the locations then how to give mat ma matrix representation for that maybe so this is the detailed figure of the rotation okay so p o then p a p n is actually perpendicular v in direction now earlier it was p y now after rotation if you try to refer this is l1 and l2 okay then similarly p z l4 and l3 see this particular data has been taken as a reference to derive the final expression we are not going to go in depth to them but altogether what is the change that's going to be that is going to come in the rotation so suppose if you are trying to rotate it about x by an angle theta then you can see the changes what are all going to come they are going they are all going to come only in the uh, in this particular matrix say nine elements all the change will come in the nine elements here there are only zeros because there is no translation so these three elements are pertain to translation since here there are no translations zeros have come and rotation about x when i wanted to then the changes are going to happen at these four elemental locations you can see there see if you are having a point that if you multiply with this rotation matrix that is what is this then you will get the near positions of that particular point after rotation similar kind of expressions have been given if you are considering rotation about y this one and if you are considering rotation about z this one you can definitely take a point and you can try to take a reference frame and you try to build a code either in python or c and you can really experience all those rotations okay so then there is a situation because we have seen uh, maybe till now what we have seen was pure translation we have seen and pure rotation we have seen but there may be a situation wherein there might be a possibility of considering it in combined mode so there may be translation rotation and translation or rotation translation and rotation that we'll try to see in this particular example say we wanted to rotate it by an angle alpha about x then we wanted to translate it by dx dy dz after that we would like to rotate it by beta about y now what is it we are going to do we will consider the translation matrix for this then we will also consider the translation matrix for this then we will also consider the translation matrix for this then we shall try to do keep one of one side by side and we do matrix multiplication the concatenated matrix whatever is going to come is going to be the resultant transformation matrix that you can see see when you are trying to rotate it about x the translation matrix pertain to that and this is the initial position so that the resultant position after rotation is going to come then when you are trying to consider the translation 
by dx dy dz this is what is your transformation matrix then see resultant matrix which one has come earlier multiplied by translation matrix that is going to give you new position means in place of this what you can do is you can keep this particular one that's why so second transformation matrix first transformation matrix and the initial position then the next one in order to get the third position we are trying to rotate it about y by an angle beta so the result in whatever has got that is what is this point that is being multiplied with this so that you have got a new so alternately what you can do is see transformation matrix 1 is this first transformation matrix second transformation matrix third transformation matrix all the three transformation matrix are going to be kept, kept side by side and the first initial point position is also being kept and if you do that multiplication you will get the resultant effect <clears throat> so this is how it has facilitated us for translation purposes as well as for rotation purposes for all purposes it has become easy for us because we have tried to follow a particular representation matrix representation in a homogeneous format that is advantage with that so let me stop my uh, discussion at this level we will continue our discussion in the next interactions.